letting him go. Mr. Dunbar, he's been sick a couple of days. It's gonna poop sample. We got the results. What happens when you don't fill the water tanks up in time? The kids, the yearlings here, turn it into a toy. Just like this guy's doing. Bad kids. Let me go out here and retrieve this. Turds. Do not get in the water. I'm talking to you. Man himself. Hey Dunbar. Hey buddy. How are you? Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. We're checking on our boy here, Mr. Dunbar. He's been sick a couple of days. Got some good news for you. All right, here we came to check on our boy. What are you guys jazzed up for? Also want to thank EcoFlow for sponsoring today's video. Mr. Thor, look at those smiles. Hey, buddy. Hey, Thor. Hey, Thor. Hey, Thor. Hey, buddy. <laughs> All right. Well, let's give Dunbar some love here. <laughs> Favorite parts about the cube feeder here. Look at that. Now, isn't that just fancy? Right here. Like the 3C cube feeder. Buddy. Here. Yeah. There. What do y'all think about that? You won't oh, okay. Ah, hey big fella. Glad you're doing better. Check. Hey, buddy. Hey, let me get you some more cubes real quick. Come on. Hey, Thor. A special guy. Thor? Uh, you want one? There you go. There you go. Oh, I'll give y'all some too. Y'all get cubes every day. nice if you can get the really long ones easier to feed our boy here here you go here you go here you go got him for you right here glad you're feeling better big fella the baby boy Dunbar, it's good to see you back in action a little bit. Thor. Is 
just gonna grab him a handful. Hey Dunbar. Oh man, you got a bunch of them. Hey, let me get you some more cubes. Real quick. Come on. Hey Thor. Our special guy, Thor. Oh, do you want one? There you go. Hey, buddy. There's quite a few there. There you go. Oh, I'll give y'all some, too. Y'all get cubes every day. Here you go, here you go, here you go. I got them for you right here. Glad you're feeling better, big fella. The baby boy. Yeah, there you go. Well, as you can tell, our baby boy is uh, doing much better, much better. So uh, Kevin and my mom have been, I've got to get a lot of credit to mom and Kevin for helping me, keeping me updated and helping me take care of this guy. Uh, my mom came out here and watered him. Kevin's been giving him cubes and checking on him and been giving me updates on him. Uh, so, which is, uh, which is really nice to have that. Um, and so I've been over here a couple times. So what we did was, if you guys are just now following us, this is Dunbar, baby boy. We raised him uh, since he was a yearling, and now he's eight years old. It's one of our main breed bulls. And then we have Big Joe over at the Ponderosa. But Dunbar here, uh, Kevin called me um, last week on a Wednesday. He said, hey, he's not feeling good. He's kind of not getting up. He's lethargic. Um, he is not eating cubes. And he's the first one. When you pull up here, when Kevin or my mom comes to feed, he shows up. He's the first one there usually. He's the boss, right, Mr. Dunbar? And so didn't, didn't come up to eat, and that was the first sign. I was like, something's wrong. So I showed up about an hour and a half later, got my dart gun, gave him a antibiotic, which is called LA-300, and then also gave him a dewormer, um, Cydectin. Those are the two things that I had. And, of course, I called my vet first, Doc Parsons, and those are the things that he suggested to do with the dart gun. Well, he said, there's one more that you need to have, and it is Ivermectin Plus. Well, uh, the store was already closed, but the next day we went and got Ivermectin Plus, me and the girls. So I came back over here, and then I gave him his last dart, took a, ta a shot two at him, and it, for some reason, we had some issues with him. They were bouncing off of him. I, I, I don't know what happened. They were bouncing off, and the dormer wasn't going through. I finally got a dart in him. Back-to-back -back, uh, dewormers uh, on two different days. Wednesday, and then Thursday, and then Mom or Kevin called me and said, or they sent us a message uh, and said he ate two days after um, his last dewormer, his last dart, he started eating cubes. I don't know what caused him to recover that fast, but he's doing much better. He's back to being Dunbar. He was up here beating on the gate a while ago because he was tired of waiting on me to give him some cubes. So he's doing great. Back to breeding season. Hopefully um, for him, his window's getting a little bit smaller and smaller, uh, but he's got some females out here. So we'll keep a close eye on him. We'll give you, we'll keep giving you updates on Dunbar. Oh, also, I did take a poop sample. If you watched the last video, so I saw that he just got up and pooped on the last time I darted him. That day, I took a poop sample from him because um, he, um, he was hanging out in the same area. It was really easy for me to do. So once he walked away, I went and got a sample and I took it to the OSU Extension Office, which is located right here in Sulphur. It's the Murray County Extension Office. They do stuff with my alma mater, Oklahoma State. Let's get our poop sample. The Dunbar poop sample. Mm. 
And I went in there, I visited Roseanne, and I said, Roseanne, which is my grandma Joyce, good friend, who works at the extension office, who also helps me get the hay samples uh, to test our hay. I said, Roseanne, I need to send off a stool sample uh, to get checked for parasites. And so that's what I did. She got me taken care of. We overnighted his sample uh, to Oklahoma State, and uh, that was on a Friday. I got the results. Uh, Monday morning so within a couple of days I caught him on the weekend I get it um, but Monday morning we got the results and so I don't know a whole lot about it so I had to google a bunch of stuff I'll show it to you right here um, I'll attach it to this and you guys can look at it and see the results <clears throat> they found some eggs and then uh, some other stuff uh, at a medium count so he wasn't overloaded with parasites necessarily uh, but he had some, and I think some, whatever it was, was enough to really kind of set him back essentially and where he was anemic. And I know that parasites can do it, make you anemic where you're not hungry. You don't want anything. You don't want to eat. Luckily he was still drinking. I'm not a parasitology guy. I don't understand a lot of it. I got to Google it. I got to study a little more. I'll attach it here for you. You can take a look at it and see what you think, but he's doing much better. We'll keep you updated with him. I'm going to head back to the Ponderosa. Marissa and I are going to work our yearlings. We're going to do some sorting because we're going to get ready for a bison sale very soon. And we've got to get those ready because we're going to take some of our animals and sell them. Bye, Don Bar. I love you. You guys tell him bye. <laughs> oh, character. All right, we're going to head to the Ponderosa. April 27th, 2024, changed the town of Sulphur forever. I got something that may help us in the future. So if you guys didn't know what happened on April 27th, 2024, a tornado hit our small town of Sulphur, Oklahoma. Very devastating to this town. According to the National Weather Service in Norman, Oklahoma, we've had 110 tornadoes alone this year on the day of the tornado that hit our downtown of Sulphur, there was a total of 34 tornadoes in one day. Not only were we dealing with the devastation of the tornado, we had our own problems here at the Ponderosa. We were running incubators and trying to hatch turkey and chicken eggs. We have several freezers like this one right here behind me. There's something that we've had for over a year now, such as a Delta II Max here. Easy, reliable, something you can come home even after a disaster and you have no power and you can get things going, such as something that runs and operates one of your businesses is right here. So the question is, you never know. You never think, you watch the tornadoes go by all the time, but you never think they're gonna hit your town until they do. You see it directly affect your friends, your family, your business. Am I prepared? What happens if there's a disaster? Do I have a backup system that can run your freezers, that can maybe run simple appliances in your home. Maybe it's coffee that's important to you in the morning that you need to operate. Maybe it, your wife has got to get that curling iron going to fix her hair before she goes to work. Can you cook a breakfast for your family before you go out for the day? Whatever it is, EcoFlow has so many offers, maybe to run your entire barn or run your entire home. EcoFlow has that. No gas, no fumes, and do you hear it? That's not the power station running. That's the freezer fan running right there. You can't even hear it. This can't run in your home or barn. All you gotta do is charge the thing. Have it ready, be prepared right here with the EcoFlow. And when disaster strikes, you can keep your business running. For the United States alone, there's been over 1,300 tornadoes this year, according to the NOAA. Whatever disaster it is, hurricane, cyclone, tornado, thunderstorm, and you never know when it's gonna hit your own town. Stay safe and powered during severe weather events with EcoFlow Tech. Reliable, indoor safe, and easy to use. EcoFlow is your ultimate home backup solution. Use my code 24EFDC 
bison. Use the link below and make sure you have your backup power for you and your family. Don't you want him? Feet? Oh. Who are you? They're skittish of that black. That's why I didn't know if you wanted me to cut it down. Uh, we're going to start sorting out our... Hello, kill deer. We're going to start uh, sorting out our yearlings. Uh, we've got some... These are 2023 calves. Um, yearlings now. Uh, we've got five bulls that we purchased in here that are a part of our feed program. Um, they're in here along with some of last year's calves, essentially. And so uh, it's getting close to sale season, and we're going to pull out some of the yearlings that uh, we think breed wise this is part of our business here so there's a meat side and then there's a, a breeding side genetics side that we like to talk about um, but we've got some animals in here from our own herd from big joe and dunbar we're gonna sort a couple of them out on what we think need to go into the breed bro uh, breeding program and then we're gonna sell so we're gonna sort some out right now uh, we've got some good looking bulls in here some heifers like this so curious 354 here uh, and then the 350 we're gonna pull them out and kind of separate them um, and so this is where a lot of you uh, want to know the business side of it and I'm pretty sure that all most bison producers do this we're gonna pull these out we're gonna separate them Marissa's gonna help me do that and uh, it's kind of a gate cut situation is how this works and uh, sometimes it goes well you never know with these guys though it could be interesting but um and then we're gonna let the ones that we're not gonna pull back for breeding and sell we're gonna let them go back out in the pasture and we'll still keep an eye on them and then we'll decide what we want to do with them so typically some of those animals will go to not that there's anything wrong with them but we put a we get a select few that we're gonna put in the sales a couple of sales one is coming up in the end of October and it's open to the public so you guys can come to it it's it it's part of the Oklahoma Bison Association which I'm a part of it's gonna be October 26 located at the State Fairgrounds in Oklahoma City so you you're more than welcome to come to that uh, as well it's gonna be here in a couple months and so me and a couple of good bison colleagues and friends of ours that are part of the Oklahoma Bison Association we're getting that going and getting it ready over a second sale at the Oklahoma City State Fairgrounds. So, here we go, we're gonna do some sorting. All right, so, I'm gonna... So, uh, I'm gonna let the rest of I need 350, I want to keep her. Those three are good, right?
What do you want me to do? Don't let him go. Don't let him go. All right, so we sorted, uh, how many did we sort? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorted off eight here for potentially selling in a sale, potentially. Well, did you guys enjoy that? <laughs> Sometimes it can get a little Western when you're working the munchkins here, but you got to do it. Got to run a business. And uh, sometimes this, these are the things that we got to do. So it's always fun. Boss Ranching, you just never know. I want to give a big thanks to EcoFlow for sponsoring us today. Stay safe and powered during severe weather events with EcoFlow Tech. Reliable, indoor safe, and easy to use. EcoFlow is your ultimate home backup solution. Use the code in the link below, 24EFDCBISON, to make sure you have backup power for your family. Thank you guys for watching us today.